Welcome to this, our final program from the Higher Level Bonding Unit. I want to look a little bit more closely at the nature of what's going on inside of the orbitals during the formation of a bond, and what we call the modern bonding theory. Modern bonding theory states that a chemical bond results from an overlap of partially filled orbitals. Let's take a look at an example by starting and look at what happens in HCl. To begin with, I'm going to take a look at the orbital arrangement inside of hydrogen first of all. It has a 1s orbit, and in that 1s orbit is an electron. And that's a picture of what the 1s orbital uh, perhaps looks like. Chlorine, on the other hand, if we consider its electron configuration, it resembles that of argon, the nearest noble gas, and then it would have 3s2, 3p5. So let's take a little bit of a look at how its electrons would arrange themselves. So there's two in this, which would be the 3s orbital, looks something like this, larger than the 1s, and then there would be five electrons located in here. And so I'll put one in this first one, and I'll put two in the next ones. So these orbitals are essentially full, and they wouldn't be involved in bonding. This one, however, with just one electron in it, this one would be involved in the formation of a chemical bond. And this one's also full, so it wouldn't be. And over here, we have this essentially partially filled. So these two orbitals would essentially overlap each other to form the chemical bond. And that would perhaps look something like this. So when we draw that Lewis dot picture of, of HCl, we can think of this single bond representing an overlap of our orbitals. And these other electrons represent these pairs of electrons that are in filled orbits. Let's look a little bit more closely now at what happens in Cl2. Again, if we look at the arrangement of electrons, again, we're going to look at what's happening in the 3s and the 3p shells. Um, so that one would be full. I'll make this one partially full. So that would be one of the chlorines, and the other chlorine would look somewhat similar. Now, in order for orbitals to be shared, they have to have opposite spinning electrons. So I'm going to turn this one around. And this would be the arrangement in the other chlorine. So again, we have these two are filled, as is this one. And likewise, over in this structure, full, full, and full. So the orbitals that would be involved in bonding would be that one and that one. So those two would get together and overlap each other, resulting in this shape. So I have an overlap of the p orbitals in this location. Now, this also occurs with not only just ground state s and p orbitals, it can also occur with hybrid orbitals. And we had that introduced in our last program. So you might recall with the, the molecule methane, which we looked at in our last program, um, it had an arrangement that was something like this. And we identified that there are four electron domains present. And that then corresponds to forming a hybrid called the sp3 hybrid. So here what I'm showing is carbon's 2s electron, and this from the second energy level would be the sp3 hybrid that forms from mixing together carbon's s and its 3p um, orbitals. So again I'll put one electron in here, and then carbon with its four valence electrons that would put one electron in each of these. And again, I'm showing an opposite spin here so that when these share, 
um, they'll have opposite spinning electrons in each one. Now we have four of these present, and so as a result we can get overlaps happening with each of the hydrogens and each of these hybrid states. And the resulting shape then of our molecule, and I guess you say we saw this in our last program, would look something like this, where the hydrogen brings along its electron and shares with each of the four sp3 hybrids. But the important thing to note again is we have an overlap of orbitals. And this overlap of orbitals, as in the other cases, always occurs at the end of our orbits. So we define a single bond as an overlap of orbitals on their ends. The name given to this overlapping orbital on the end is called the sigma bond. So if I was to look at this structure and draw it out, I would say that methane has four single bonds and therefore it also has four sigma bonds. Each of these bonds representing an overlap of orbitals at their ends. Let's look at the nature now of the double bond. I'll start with a picture of C2H4. So I'll put carbon, carbon, four hydrogens around it. I believe I have a total of uh, 12 electrons I can use in my picture. So there, there, and a double bond located here. Now before I explain what's happening here, let's take a look at the carbons in the middle here. Um, these carbons have three electron domains around them. So that means they're going to form an sp2 hybrid. So let's take a look at this carbon a little bit more closely. So in its valence shell, in the 2s, there would be two electrons. And then there would be two more electrons in the 2p orbits. So this is what it looks like in what we call its ground state. Now before it bonds, hybrid theory suggests that we have to blend together some orbits. And this is the recipe of what I have to mix together. So the orbits I'm going to mix together is that one, that one, and that one. I want to leave one of my p electrons, I'm going to leave this one, unblended. Hence you see it over here. So here is that one 2p orbit that's not involved in the blending. And here I have my sp2 hybrid coming from mixing the states together that I have with the check marks. So these electrons would now put themselves here, here, and here. Now my hydrogens Remember, they bring along the hydrogen atoms, essentially have a 1s orbital, and they would have an electron perhaps spinning like this. So I can bring that and bond that into each of these states here, here. And um, I'll leave this one for a moment because that's going to bond with my other carbon atom that's present. So these two are being used to bond with the hydrogen. As we can see, the carbon has to bond with two hydrogens. So we can think then of the carbon that's I've indicated here, the one that's on the end, forms this arrangement. So I'm going to call that carbon number two. So that's carbon two. So this diagram, this shows these white lobes are the sp2s, each one with one electron. This represents this unbonded or left alone p orbital for now. So this is the arrangement of the orbitals around carbon number two. Now let's take this one, I'll label it carbon number one. It's going to do exactly the same set of steps. It's going to form an sp2 hybrid and leave that electron unattended. So 
So its picture would look something like this. Now, as I mentioned, on the two lobes that are located at the ends, so here and here, those two are going to bond with hydrogen, but this one needs to bond with the other carbon. So I'm going to show that now. We're going to overlap that orbital to form a sigma bond between my two carbon atoms. Bring it a bit closer. Now, what now happens here is we have an overlapping of the sp2 hybrid that creates a sigma bond because they're overlapping on their ends. Here, the p orbitals touching above and below, they create a second type of bond called a pi bond. So a double bond is essentially made of two types of bonds, a st usually a stronger sigma bond and a weaker pi bond. The pi bond exists both above and below the plane of the molecule. So here, a pi bond usually results from the overlap of p orbitals on their side. So this overlap here and this overlap here, that makes one pi bond. And as I mentioned, in the center here, where I have the overlapping sp2 hybrids, that's a single bond in there. That makes one sigma bond. So a double bond is essentially made of these two put together. Let's apply this now to a few examples looking at counting sigma and pi bonds. So if I take a look at my first molecule and I'm trying to identify how many sigma bonds are present and how many pi bonds are present. Well, sigma bonds are represented by each of the single bonds. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, and seven. Now, a double bond is may also made of a sigma bond and a pi bond. So there's sigma bond then number eight and number nine. So I have nine sigma bonds present. Now, each double bond has a sigma bond and a pi bond. So that's one pi bond, two pi bonds. So that substance would have nine sigma bonds and two pi bonds in it. Here's one that's a little bit more complicated. Again, every single bond constitutes a sigma bond. And a double bond also contains in it a sigma bond. So I'm going to go back now and go 12, 13, 14, and 15. So I have 15 sigma bonds in this compound. Now, as far as counting the pi bonds, I've got one there, second, a third, and a fourth. So there would be four pi bonds in that structure. And in my last example, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Now a triple bond is made of a sigma bond. So I've got six sigma bonds present. And these represent two pi bonds. So there'd be two p orbitals involved, um, four p orbitals altogether, two from each one. So this is two pi bonds. So that would be the overall um, type of bonds that are present. So from this, you need to understand modern bonding theory states that bonds happen from an overlap of orbitals. If they overlap on their ends, we classify them as a sigma bond. And if they overlap on their sides, that constitutes a pi bond. Pi bonds are present whenever you have multiple bonds, be it double or triple. Thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for our next series, which deals with thermodynamics.